Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the 3X Value Growth Podcast. My name is Carrie Sauls. I'm a value growth advisor to mid-market companies and author of the bestseller, Multiply Your Business Value in Three Steps. I'm coming to you today, as always, from New Hampshire. And because I'm in New Hampshire, I love to share New Hampshire trivia. Today's piece of trivia is that the Mount Washington Auto Road at Great Glen is New Hampshire's oldest man-made tourist attraction up at Mount Washington. Who knew? Who knew? Today, I'm joined by Ken Keyes, PhD, of CRG Consulting Resource Group International. First, welcome, Ken. Well, thanks, Carrie, for having me on your show. I'm delighted to have you. Where are you calling in from? I'm Vancouver, Canada, but we do business all around the world, but we're a West Coast kid. You're West Coast. Okay. So yeah, time zones are a little bit different. Exactly. All right. Well, Ken, again, thank you for joining me. But for those of you who don't know Ken already, you really should. Let me give you a little bit of an introduction to Ken. An author, speaker, and consultant, Dr. Ken Keyes is the president and CEO of CRG Consulting Group International. He's an expert in leadership, life purpose, wellness, and the foremost global authority on behavioral assessment strategies and processes that increase and multiply your success rate. He's an expert on helping individuals, teams, and organizations to realize their full potential and to live on purpose. Thank you so much, Ken, for joining us here today. I can't wait to get dive into this interview. The topic that we've selected for our seven-question interview is are, Why Aren't You More Like Me, which is Ken's more recent book, and we're going to do that in just seven minutes. Are you ready? I am ready, Carrie. This is awesome. This go, 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 right? Here we go. The and clock's are ticking. Number one, who's your ideal client, Ken? Uh, we have two ch- streams that we serve, primarily internal and external developers. So speakers, coaches, consultants, trainers, seminar companies that serve clients that help with their performance, or the internal professional within even mid-market, the HR, the personnel department, the trainer, the consultant that is helping that organization go to the next level. So internal and external professional developers are our core clients and then those ones, they use our tools and resources to serve their constituents. So going on to question number two, what is the problem that you're trying to solve? I'm thinking about my middle market business owners and leaders. What are you solving for them? Well, when we think about performance in life, you know the Gallup survey about what percentage of people are engaged in life. And it was 13% of the global workforce were engaged. Or if you look at certain documentation, less than 10% are living on purpose. So we help individuals and organizations realize the potential by them really getting connected to their purpose, to their personal style, to their personality, so that we believe in strengths. So playing to their strengths, understanding their leadership skills, what are the competencies. So when we think about the people side of business is that we really help individuals to equip other people to be successful in life and most of the research and most of the data out there is that we're not doing it and we're not doing it very well. So obviously you've built up this massive knowledge and the the data that you're giving me. What are the typical symptoms that have helped you see this? What's, what are the symptoms of this problem that you see businesses and these individuals experiencing that therefore they need this skill? Well, first of all, lack of engagement by the employees, turnover rates, performance criteria, people frustrated with individuals not doing their work. I don't know if anybody watching this has ever had individuals on their team that are really not coming to the table. Um, There was a research study that said, you know, what percentage of people believe that their leader is incompetent? This was done by CERIC, which is a foundation in Canada. And they said 70% of people believe that their leader is incompetent. So we have all this frustration, and I don't believe that people wake up in the morning just to be intentionally poor leaders or incompetent leaders or ill-equipped, but they haven't done the training. And so you see that constantly. You, you mean, one of my co-authors of Deliberate Leadership, which is the sister book to March More Like Me, works in law enforcement, is that most people in that profession 
are promoted to be sergeant corporals or lieutenants before they have any leadership training. It really should be the opposite. You're, what I hear you saying is this is a skill set, a muscle that you need to be able to excel as you move forward, but we haven't even taught them how to build that muscle. We haven't given them the foundation to be able to excel. It, it's, it's the Peter principle for, at the most basic level. Absolutely. And then there's some new research, Carrie, that links into it around self-awareness. Most people, here's the, this is came from Dr. Tashu, who is a colleague of mine, is that most people believe that they know themselves and how I come across to you, Carrie, is how I believe I think about my own competencies. So 95% of people believe that how they come across is how other people view them. But did you know that only 10% are congruent? So most people are delusional. They don't know that they don't know that they don't know. And that's one of the things we do is that we are one of the best in the world in creating consciousness, self-awareness, emotional intelligence, all these words that people are mindfulness that people are talking about so that I can know that I don't know. And then what am I going to do to go forward? That's pretty powerful to say, here's what you don't know here's what they are very, very specifically, and now consciously with more awareness that you don't know to take the steps forward. It's not like it magically is going to happen because you're saying that these are skill sets you have to ingrain into your experience before that you can actually deliver it for others. Well, absolutely. I mean, you wouldn't expect for somebody to go to any airline and say, you know what, I, this is my first day. I've never flown before, but I'm going to take the 737 up with you. But I'm, you know, I'm really, really motivated. So there are some really, really, really nice idiots that are out there, Carrie. And I say that with endearment. What I mean by that is that they've never had the training. They've never had the consciousness, in, especially in the mid-market is that people haven't or aren't investing in training. I had a client phone the other day, 10,000 employees, never, ever done a single hour on supervisory or leadership training in the entire company. Well, how would you ever expect these people to be successful when they have, they have no awareness, training, development to be able to do to fulfill the roles and responsibilities that they've been entrusted with? You're, you're leaving me speechless because I'm thinking, how can they be aligned if they haven't had this core foundation? Well, they're not. And that's why they're frustrated. That's why a lot of people are failing. I had another client, 450 employees, $150 million a year, never done any training with the employees for 25 years. It was an entrepreneur who had very, very successful, hard driving sales organization. That's where he got his success, but no development. And so it always relied on him. He had to be there 24-7 as a result of that. Well, that's one of the problems I'm trying to fix. So we're talking the same language here. My fourth question, and you partly already answered it, what are the most common mistakes that you see too many owners making? Or what, what, are they, what mistakes are they making when they think they can even solve this on their own? Well, I mean, leadership and expertise. If you're not an expert in that space, why would you think that you have those skill sets. So I would say that the majority are not investing in their people, in their team, in themselves for the people side of their business. Yeah, we want to talk about the systems, the processes. You know, I did um, organizational redesign and process mapping for companies like Chrysler. So we still need to be able to do all those things. But if I can't lead you, if I can't communicate to you, if I don't know, they, they don't know that they don't know you haven't had the training, so why would I expect you? Don't feel badly about it. I mean, you go to experts for your car. If you can't fix that, you go to experts for IT for your computer. Why do it be any different with people? And I think one of the big mistakes is they way underestimate the power of developing their individuals, the people, the team, the organization, and it should be a line item for the organization to take people to the next level. It should be a line item because you have a line item for marketing, for sales, for finance. Why isn't there a line item for developing your most valuable resource that walks out the door every night? Absolutely. And a lot of times what happens, Carrie, is that HR and personnel uh, play not to lose rather than play to win. So it's really all about compliance and hiring and making sure I don't get sued rather than really developing the personhood of the individuals there. Great input, Ken. Thank you. Let's move on to question number five. 
What's one valuable free action that you can suggest that our audience members can implement that will increase the value of their business from, from your perspective? Well, first of all, is just taking action. It, at any, make this a priority. <laughs> and now there's all kinds of free sources that are uh, available online. I remember meeting with uh, Dick Bowles, who wrote the book, What Colors Your Parachute? He's now passed away. He was 92. And I said, uh, Dick, why is it that we have so many people dissatisfied, disengaged? And he said, well, they had not been willing to do the work. So you make a mindset that you're going to change the culture to be development focused and that you're going to embrace that. You're going to choose that and that you're going to put that into the time logs or the development of the organization and the individuals and you're going to encourage it. So that's something that's free. But yes, it's going to take action. But you just decide today that now this is going to be priority to develop ourselves, to develop our skills and to look for what the gaps are so we can go to the next level. Perfect, Ken. Question number six, what is one valuable free resource that you can direct people to that will further help them in fixing this problem? Well, we have set up a free gift for all your listeners. Thank they can you. go to my speaker site, which is called Ken Keys, K-E-N-K-E-I-S dot com slash 3X value. Huh, I wonder where I got that from. And I'm going to give you a free copy of my ebook, The Quest for Purpose. And so when we think about people deciding what direction they want to go, lots of times people are disengaged because they're doing the wrong jobs or doing the wrong responsibility. So the only person who could validate who they are and what they can do is them. But you have to be able to do the work. So take responsibility. And so that's a free gift that I have for you. We'll give it so it's in the show notes and you can post it in there for people Beautiful. as well. Beautiful. Perfect. And my last question is, what would be one question that I should have asked you that I didn't that would give great value to our audience? And share the answer, please. Hmm. When you think about what is it, you, so Ken, you said self-awareness is important. Well, what self-awareness is foundational? Well, obviously, I have a bias around my book, the, Why Aren't You More Like Me, which is this site, is that the research shows is that if I don't know my, our, Why Aren't You More Like Me is based on our personality model. We have the number one personality or personal style model in the world from, judged from participants is that there was research done is that only 2% of the population will realize their potential without it. So make sure you understand your personal style. And here's why that's important. Your nature and your nurture. Your nature is really non-negotiable. We have this, these preferences that I want to embrace, that I want to understand. Not right, not wrong, just different. So does the nature of the work, the role of responsibility match my strengths, who I am, what I'm doing? And can I play to that? Can I articulate that? Can I build a team that complements one another with all those dynamics? So get to know yourself. You're the only person that's responsible for it. And then if you get my book, Why Aren't You More Like Me, there's a free assessment included as part of that dynamic as well. So that for sure is non-negotiable. It's powerful. It's transformational in every relationship we have in life from personal to work. Wow. What a way to wrap up our seven questions and seven minute interview for the 3X Value Growth Podcast. Thank you so much, Dr. Ken Keyes. This has been terrific, more than I thought we could squeeze into a brief interview. Thank You're you welcome. for being my guest here. Pleasure. Thanks for checking out the 3X Value Growth Podcast. If you like what we're doing here, head over to iTunes and subscribe, leave us a review, or rate us. It's very much appreciated. And if you'd like to learn more about the 3X Value Growth model, go to www.3xvaluegrowth.com forward slash model for the PDF.